Do you work hard for your money? Be honest, after a long days of work when you kick your feet up, do you log on to your computer and make it rain on a bunch of random women? Does nothing make your <coughs> balls harder than giving mommy money? And I'm not talking about your mother. Well then you might be a pay pig. I was recently made aware of the wacky, weird, and kind of awesome world of Finn Dom. Financial domination is a kink shared by some men who get pleasure out of giving women money. I'm not talking like Twitch Prime subs. I'm talking actual money where it makes a dent in your bank account. And for some of you out there, that may be Twitch. But this is taking it to a whole other level. <laughs> Listen, I don't think I can answer all the questions here in one video. I don't know what the right answer is. I don't know if this is cool. I don't know if this is a problem. I see both sides of the coin here. Today we're going to watch Cash Slaves inside the dystopian fa- of financial domination. I am absolutely going to need some G Fuel to get me through today's video. Right now, I'm sipping on Shiny Splash, which is my favorite flavor. You guys can use code Filion at checkout to receive up to 30% off your order at G Fuel. Massive thank you to G Fuel for sponsoring this video. I want all of your money. Financial domination is different things to different people probably, but it's basically finding someone who's their worth giving the money that you worked hard for. Oh <laughs> my God, what went wrong? As the underworld of BDSM continues to emerge on the surface of the mainstream, there appears to be a kink for just about anything. One of these thriving fe is something called financial domination, where submissives or cash slaves seek dominatrixes out online and surrender increasingly large increments of their money for little, if anything, in return. As with other forms of BDSM, the relinquishment of power itself triggers a sexual release. Only rather than whips and chains, it's money. Wow. <laughs> what an introduction. There's really no other way to, like, Put this. <laughs> you guys know I love to talk about masculinity in my video. It's a multifaceted, very complex thing to define, and for many reasons. And it seems to me that this financial domination is predominantly male. Like, if there's cougars out there that will just give me money for being a hot boy, then I mean, like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I just don't envision a world where I can be like, give me money, you stupid, saggy old wench. I will never be your pool boy. However, I can imagine women being like, give me money, you stupid pig. Nobody likes you and you will amount to nothing. Harry, Harold, I guess that's why we're here. Give me money, you stupid fat f okay? Nobody will ever love you and you have a small dick. And the guy's just like, yes, mommy. I said more. What is that? Chump change? Pathetic. <laughs> Please. Do better next time. Get out of my face. Financial domination is a growing checkbox across the British sites on the internet. There are thousands of chat rooms online devoted to cash slaves specifically. One of the main sites for financial domination is called findom.com. And you see adverts like this. This is a woman saying, empty out your wallet. I don't give a single shit about your life. All I want is your money. The money that you work so hard for that I'll spend in less than a day. How do you feel about that now, huh? <laughs> you see what I mean? Where this f is so in your face and degrading. I have to wonder, like, is this okay? Some people have the mindset that all sexual fantasies are okay as long as they're not hurting other people. One can make the argument that this is very well harming an individual, but I guess I'm here to learn <laughs> more about this. Of course you'll feel satisfaction and pleasure because you served your one and only purpose in life. But I just, I'm not sure if it can be that, like, that simple that you just say that to someone and then they give you their money. The scary thing is, that is exactly how it works. <laughs> to figure out if this was as cut and dry as it seems, I tracked down a cash slave named Stevo, who has given over his entire life to a financial dominatrix named Mixtrix. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yo, Steven. Shout out Steven, man. Imagine willingly going on Vice to film this. You will have millions of people judging your life choices. <laughs> and that takes balls of steel. Like, that's what I mean. Is this guy a walking Giga Chad because he's so Sigma? I don't know. I met Mixtrix uh, online on uh, findoms.com. Uh, it's been two years now, almost exactly. You know, started out, you know, really spending any type of money in like strip clubs that's interesting steve started with strip clubs and it spiraled into being a slave see them outside the club even though i was married at the time then i moved to idaho and 
bought a farm out in the middle of nowhere to try to, um, part of it was, you know, semi-retire, but another part of it was try to, um, you know, get out of that, and I figured I'd be out away from nowhere, but ended up finding it online. Um, as a fellow uh, sub on the site said, he said, you're living the dream. Living the dream. You found a nice mommy that you can just give all your money to. That is what we're aspiring to have. Typical American dream, white picket fence, financial stability. No. Finding a nice dominatrix that you can just siphon your bank account to. Now that is living the dream. The dream every financial slave has, but um, few, or few or almost none can ever actually do it. Oh, wow. It's hard. Um, how much of your income... To you. Grandpa is my name. Spoiling is my game. Please tell me this man doesn't have grandchildren. Give to mixed tricks. She can have access to anything. I pay the bills. I don't really buy anything for myself. Pretty much all goes to her, the house, the bills. Is your relationship sexual? I mean, not in the traditional sense. No, there's no shot. There's no shot this guy has grandchildren. Like, what what kind of job do you do? Is work a dream? Do you have, like, someone telling you what to do all day? Is... Oh, no. No, I've always been in management, so um, it's the other way around. I tell people what to do all day. Bro, these girls have it made, dude. They have it made. They figured something out, and they are capitalizing on male... If I say stupidity, then I'm not being inclusive, but, uh... Is this a sickness? Like, I don't know. Can somebody help me out here? <laughs> Apparently, this is, like, a popular thing in the BDSM world. You have powerful men who usually tell other people what to do, and then they get pleasure out of being submissive because they never get to actually do that. Now, I am not a doctor, psychiatrist, or psychologist that can really break down the inner workings of this king. I'm just a humble YouTuber diving down weird rabbit holes for the sake of my enjoyment so maybe that's my kink are you submissive in other aspects no, of life no not at all I'm, really i'm not a politics player at all at work <laughs> no i state my uh, mind i'll you know tell my boss off if there's any i have any issues i'm not s submissive at all in the outside world Although I didn't understand why someone would submit themselves to this extreme form of pain, or even how financial domination had become a fetish of its own in the first place, the community is growing. I sought out one of the most exorbitant examples of this phenomenon, achieved by a dominatrix known as Matrix Madeline. Last year, while auctioning off a webcam session, an anonymous man from Australia sent her $42,000 online in one click. Would not be surprised if this was Mr. Beast. I mean, it fits the narrative. Uh, it's totally possible. The man declined the cam session, and without a single further interaction, he disappeared. We are in San Francisco, standing outside kink.com, which is the most popular BDSM website in the world. We're about to go and meet Madeline, who is the queen bitch of financial domination. All right, we're about to meet the alpha female, the queen bee. It's easy to put somebody in a submissive position and then f them. Yeah. But to mind f somebody, you know, it you really have to get into their head. Mm. <laughs> okay. What childhood traumas do they have that makes them this way? You really gotta tap into that, you know? Their inner psychosis of why they wanna give money to mommy and really understand where they're coming from and really understand what makes them tick and that is what financial domination is all about because it is all a mind f so like your career has also been able to blossom and grow <laughs> with the internet and technology oh absolutely i mean technology has really afforded my career and has given me the ability to be able to have these interactions with these men who are into financial domination. I mean, for instance, this man who lives in Australia that sent me this $42,000, whom I've never met. You know, after I thought about it, we really aren't all that different. I think each and every one of us shares a little bit of this financial domination kink. Student loans, landlords, rent, mortgage. I mean, might as well just get off to it. How many of your counterparts, your work friends, or maybe not, were like, these bitches. <laughs> These bitches. I mean, 
how much shade was you getting? People are saying, oh, you didn't do anything for this. Right? It's so amazing. And it's like, I can see how people would think that, but I've worked for 10 years to, you know, establish that sort of persona, you know. Exactly. She put in the blood, sweat, and tears over 10 years to get to this position. So all you haters out there, don't be quick to judge. What I want to know is what's stopping any woman from waking up tomorrow and just deciding that she's a level 99 dominatrix in the femdom category? Like, what's the difference between a beginner and an expert? Is your ability to manipulate men that much better? Are your insults just top tier? You really know how to get the guy to dig down deep into his wallets and make it hurt? And character that somebody is willing and able to, and, and got off on pressing that button and transferring that money, that $42,000. The inflection in the voice, you know what I'm talking about, like the justification. You know, it took 10 years to build up this persona for them to click the button and give me money. Like it makes sense, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. I have a lot of questions. Madeline has mentored a group of dominatrixes in the art and psychology of financial domination. These women now have cash slaves all around the world. One of which is a slave they share from India who goes by the name Fifi Kinky. So you're going to put $200 in each of our customs for you accounts right now. Okay, mommy. Just give me one second. <laughs> what if he doesn't obey? Like, what if he keeps playing with them? Good baby. Love hearing those little clicks of obedience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, me too. When people send me $5 on Venmo, you know, the little cha-ching really gets my socks off. I just love the sound of ruining this guy's life for my pleasure. Mm -hmm. No, it's consensual, duh. He wants to give me money and I want to receive it. Fifi, we know you're really stupid and useless, but can you do two things at the same time? <laughs> Can you handle that, Fifi? We know you're absolutely brain dead and nobody loves you for who you are. Yeah? Can you do that for mommy? Can you take on two little tasks at the same time? Tell us how much money you estimate you spend a year on financial domination. Don't lie. How much money? Uh, uh, I'll have to check on this. Yeah, let me just go through my stubs really quick. Let's see. $107,000. What's scary to me is that there are dudes out there with a lot of money that this probably is just like a fun thing for them and they actually derive pleasure out of it. But to get that much money, presumably you have to be good at one thing or you're semi-smart. Maybe? I don't know. There's a lot of stupid people out there with a lot of money, which also brings my point home. How do you devolve into this? Bye. But I'd say since January, you've bought me a camera a new laptop, and then sent me hundreds of dollars every month, maybe a thousand, so upwards of five grand. Can you please tell me what you would say financial domination is? To me, it's power. It's like the ultimate exchange of power. Men fetishize their wallets in a way that is like, incomparable. They compete with each other with money. They attract women with money. They spend all day working really hard. It's kind of what men are raised to do in their lives, is to work really hard and make money. That's a good point. I mean, I definitely agree with some of that. But aren't you fetishizing the man's wallet because the man only exists to give you the money? Isn't your career based off of him fetishizing his wallet, but now you're fetishizing his wallet? So is the fetishization of wallets the corruption here? Like, why is it okay for you to fetishize his wallet and for him to not fetishize his? Or is it only okay if you make money off of him fetishizing his wallet? I think my brain's gonna explode. Like, I do think there's a problem with extreme competitiveness when it comes to money and men putting money on such a pedestal that it dictates their entire personality. And then we come along and we take all that money. I was on cam like three weeks ago and somebody was sending me $42 every 30 seconds and they were, did it for hours. But like, obviously you're taking pleasure from that as well, right? So like someone's giving you money, you're like fucking, it feels good for them, but you're like, yeah. feels good for me as well. Oh, like yeah. $42 every couple of seconds, <laughs> yes! This is a symbiotic parasocial relationship that capitalizes off a f that may be actually an illness. How 
after you stop that airy feeling, like that heady feeling where you're just receiving all of this money, like how do you just be like, actually, no, we should stop? Some go deep and they want you to like literally budget for them. Like they want you to hold the password to their bank account and they want you to create a legitimate budget for them. Is there ever a point where a dominatrix is like, whoa, you're giving me way too much money? I don't think so. I think the guy just gets harder. Second of all, I can do this, man. Put me in, all right? Let me be a dominatrix for a day. You can all be my pay pigs and I'll just insult you and you give me money. I don't see the problem in that. <laughs> that makes their life a little bit difficult when your dominatrix is doing your budgeting. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm giving you lunch money. That is when you have hit the climax. <laughs> In a way, being physically turned on by squandering your wealth goes against the most basic human urges of greed and altruism. In a hyper-capitalistic age where wealth is paramount to defining who we are and what we are, reaching euphoria by throwing it all away seems like the ultimate dystopian f That is a very accurate description of this. It's a dystopian f Dr. Michael Aaron is one of the few sexual minority specialists knowledgeable in financial domination. He has studied the allure behind this intense eroticization of money. There's a lot of people into financial domination who are very controlled about it. These are typically people who have money to spend, so they may have a lot of wealth. And if they blew $10,000, that's like you and I blowing a penny. When you read online, a lot of submissives seem to say they fantasize about bankruptcy. You may fantasize about it, but if you're actually going through and destroying yourself in that way, I think that the people who make that leap have other things going on that allow them to act on being so self-destructive. I have clients who are dominatrixes, and the people who are real pros, when they have someone who comes or contacts them and says, "I here's my debit card and here's my pin number and I want you to drain me. Um, they don't accept that. <laughs> I want you to drain me. <laughs> that takes on a whole new meaning. They're probably being drained in two different areas. Drain me. Take my money. Oh, I feel so good. In terms of financial domination, in a lot of cases, the, the doms outweigh the submissives for that particular. Yes brands of kink. It's a function of our economy. At times of e economic difficulty, you have more people entering the sex work field. So you have more sex workers and less clients, which creates a discrepancy. So in terms of financial domination, you're even more likely, I think, to have a lot of people coming into that because there's the appearance of this is easy money. Anyone who wants to do it can announce that they're expert at it. That's the answer to my question. I guess there really is nothing stopping you from being like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm the raid boss dominatrix. I drain all the wallets. There hasn't been a wallet that I haven't drained. We are in Knoxville, Tennessee, standing outside the home of Mixtrix, who is a financial dominatrix. She also lives with Steve-O, who is her submissive, a man slave, and an all-round house bitch. <gasps> She waited this long in the mini documentary to drop the fact that this man lives with a dominatrix. Hello, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank I'm you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Hello. While Steve-O works at his communications job all day, Mixtrix is usually in session with her team of financial slaves from the computer in her kitchen. When we first met, I think he had a lot more disposable income for this. So I think I sucked that up pretty quick. You know what I mean? Take, 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 take. Where'd it go? Did you put it in a long-term ETF? You know, get 6% each year on your money? Would you call him a friend? Yeah, sure. But he, he, at times, he's my bitch is what he really is. Oh God, <laughs> this is so dark. Some people really enjoy having the attention from a master. Wow, that's too big. Thank God, could you not put your hand on every single piece? God, we'll put it down somewhere. It feels validating where the master says, you're in my household now. You're part of my family. I take care of you. That's very validating for some people, right? In a financial situation and why um, some people may be enamored with money entering the picture is because of what money may mean from an emotional standpoint for that person. So I'll kind of use him as an ATM. And I'll say to him, hey, give me 50 bucks. I want 50 bucks to go do something. And he'll give it to me. Let's go. <laughs> it's payday, bitch. Let's do it. 
Oh, this is dark. <laughs> What's the answer here? <laughs> this is not okay in this instance. This seems a little bit, uh, exploitative. Like, is it consensual if Steve or people like Steve are not in the right frame of mind to consent? Mixtrix and Steve-O's life was certainly unconventional, but they somehow seemed content in their fringe postmodern romance. Content? <laughs> Bro! Steve-O has given up quite a lot for financial domination, including two marriages. He left a wife and a stepdaughter behind when he moved in with Mixtrix as her full-time cash slave. This guy's been married twice and left behind his stepdaughter. Why are we still here? We went on a honeymoon to the Oregon coast, and the very day we got back, I, I weakened and I gave an online dom uh, like $700. You know, my family always had kids. I come from a family of eight kids, so uh, I wanted to raise kids and tried it for a while. And just raised the kids for about six years. Are you still in contact? Not, not really. I mean, they're not too happy with me. And... What, what would be a sort of typical client for financial domination on the male side? Like, what kind of man? Educated, successful, smart, interesting Rich. guys. Me? <laughs> no, not all are rich. You know, no. they, well, you know what though? They give what they can, that's the point. It's a sacrifice. If you make $1,000 a week, you know, it's not that much to give away $20. If you made $400 a week, $20 seems a huge amount. You know what I mean? It just depends. You know, that's a lot to some people. So it's, it's the sacrifice you're giving. It's not the, you know, amount. How, how much would you say you've spent on on this on this over the years mm -hmm. I mean, over a hundred thousand you know maybe two i don't know more <laughs> yeah that might ruin a marriage yeah? yeah what's different from this relationship that you have with mixed tricks that you wasn't getting in your relationships before i can be myself i can say anything you know of course respectfully but i can say anything you know that i'm feeling or that i'm thinking and i'm, I'm accepted it's not oh you're weird. <laughs> Why would you think that? She's accepting. On both ends, you have people who are sort of on the fringes. Look at this shot, man. That is an absolute banger of a shot. You got Steve-O on the floor looking up at his mommy with money flying. The rule of thirds, bro. This is sick. One person has a desire for this kind of domination. The other person just simply has a desire for money and they are on the fringes and one person says I, I i think i would like this i don't know where to go with this and the other person says seems like an easy way to make money financial domination isn't simple no f ever really is but perhaps money and the pain that comes with being destitute is the ultimate means of submission the fear greater and the pain longer lasting it's somehow unsurprising that there's a thriving community fetishizing the loss of capitalism symbol of power and control. Wow. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this down in the comments. Maybe you can debate it. Is this exploitative? Is this just women capitalizing on men's f Can it go both ways? You let me know. I'm going to read them all, all right? And now you're going to be a good little pay pig. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave a comment, and hit the like button. Because you're useless, and that's all you're ever going to be good for. Now get out of my face.